Breaking news now. NATO smacks down a massive item target, amid a painful rebirth in the face of rising Russian imperialism in Europe, the world's most potent and populous military alliance discreetly achieved a crucial spending objective this year, after Russia invaded Ukraine on a massive scale, their third neighboring invasion in 15 years, NATO was eager to lend a hand to Kiev in its fight for survival, but it was woefully unprepared. Despite President Volodymyr Zelensky's hopes for mobilization, the 74-year-old alliance has not folded, contrary to President Vladimir Putin's hopes, and general, the alliance's brain death period of vicious backstabbing is behind us, according to French President Emmanuel Macron's 2019 description. However, the potential return of former President Donald Trump to the Oval Office could signal renewed future volatility. In order to confront an unmoored Kremlin, NATO must now fulfill its promise to support Ukraine and change course. This change is costly and takes a long time. Point two major spending goals for the next decade were agreed upon the Allies during their September 2014 summit in Wales. Members will move towards or surpass spending 2% of GDP on military by 2024, with 20% of defense spending going toward developing and purchasing new, high tech weapons. There is a lack of clarity as the due date draws near. Unfortunately, for the nations which have managed to cross the 2% mark, most of NATO still has a ways to go. It appeared like a major victory for a bloc that was so engulfed in budgetary issues, according to NATO's estimates, all 31 member nations had exceeded the 20% spending goal by July 2023. In order to get a comment, Newsweek emailed NATO.20% is just as significant as 2%, according to Fabrice Pothier a former director of policy planning for NATO, who spoke to Newsweek about the technical aspect of those targets. It's not just about how much you spend, it's where you spend it. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has highlighted the imperative that we upgrade our electronic warfare, air defense, and other outdated technologies. So, 20% is a huge issue when looking at it solely from a defensive technological perspective. It's not just about buying off the shelf, it's about renewing, modernizing and keeping the edge, including in adopting emerging technologies like AI. The superiority of NATO hardware over Russian technology was on full display in Ukraine. The soldiers in Kiev are also making deadly use of the alliance's outdated hardware. Ukrainian and NATO officials have made it plain that the West is sending too little ammunition and weapons at too sluggish of a pace after decades of low-intensity counterinsurgency operations and the so-called peace dividend following the Cold War, the alliance's military-industrial base has been severely depleted. It's good news that all allies are now meeting that target, explained James Rogers, co-founder and director of research at the UK's Council on Geostrategy think tank, in an interview with Newsweek. That means that increasingly, Shares of military expenditure are not being spent on things like personnel and pensions and all of those sorts of things. This is good to stimulate the defense industrial base within the Euro-Atlantic area and beyond, said Rogers. Countries like Poland are buying a large share of their new military equipment from countries such as South Korea, and this is generally good for connectivities across the Atlantic-Pacific regions. Still, difficult concerns persist, even in the face of achievements. Where do you put this 20%? Asked Pothier. Do you invest it in creating European-made technology, such as air defense systems? The French hope this will help close a major gap in NATO's and Europe's defensive capabilities. Or do you go more for existing technology like the US Patriot system and the Israeli systems, which is what Germany is proposing? These debates, which can be quite technical, can become very political, according to him. If the two main European military powers go in different directions about where they want to put their money, you're not going to build that defense industrial base for certain technologies, like air defense systems, that will be robust enough to actually create the kind of mass of production that you need. As a result of their dependence on various technologies, the main NATO forces in Europe will be spread thin under this scenario. According to Pothier, additional objectives are required. Already, top brass on NATO's eastern border are pushing for more funding. We are in a new security reality, and everybody has to do their share, Prime Minister Kaya Kallas of Estonia told Newsweek in May, 
pledging her small Baltic nation to allocate at least 3% of its GDP to the military, may still need new spending goals to support NATO's new age. These spending pledges were agreed in 2014 which was a much more stable time in relation to even now, added Rogers. The strategic environment has deteriorated significantly since then.